Hello friends and welcome back to In The Studio by 100TB.com. Boy, has it been a long time since we've done one of these. I forgot we had this show. <laughs> I know. It's been, what, three, four months? But yeah. In The Studio's here. Look, look, we've got our desk branding. This is the first In The Studio with our new desk. I like it. It looks good. I, it looks it looks great. I'm I'm it happy. Yeah, they all good. saw during DAC most likely. I know. I, I was know. really excited when we did our first in the studio without all desks as well. You know, that was like the big reveal, the new show, the new yeah. crew, the new desk. It was the whole shebang. Especially after our old old desk, which was an IKEA table, and before <laughs> that, it was my and Aldi's bedroom. So you know, step by step, we got it closer to this. Also, the the old desk looked a lot better when it wasn't on camera. Like we got some really cool teaser yeah. shots before <laughs> we unveiled the studio. And I'm like, oh wait, when you put this when you put the studio yeah. lighting on it and the camera yeah not so hot baby steps baby steps can't build a, a world-class set overnight so all right we're going to catch up on some bts stuff uh Kahlo guy has joined us so we're going to talk about that a little bit good old dakota is an official member of the bts crew we're going to wrap up dac talk about roster changes and then just kind of current events get to talk a little year beast perhaps have you boys been playing your year beast come on Tell me you've been playing the year beast. I haven't LG. played it once. Don't plan on it. You you guys are. I had a I had Merlini carry me. Oh good. I I was like went into it like a normal Dota game. Like oh what hero am I going to play? What'd be a good hero? And I had the mindset like when year beast happens, it's like everyone groups up with their beast five v five fights and pushes. I'm like, I'm gonna go against the meta and be clever and pick a split pusher. So I like sneaky like take a side lane while that's going on. I pick terribly. Oh boy, did that go badly. I was yeah. like solo pushing a lane and suddenly triple zoo salty came out of nowhere. AA ice blast, I'm dead from flight <laughs> I'm just like What? Yeah. How, what what is this mode? <laughs> yeah. The beast will do that. He's yeah. got some, some fun spells you can I play around with. Luckily Mulini <laughs> was there to carry me, so good. So, so you see one anyway. Even though I got my terribly. BZZ Pugna set. I'm happy. Really? That see that's a no, fun set. Idea. Apparently everyone's <laughs> getting that right now or something. <laughs> I, 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 some I had like know. an inventory full of I got BZZ a spirit breaker set. I would like that. I've gotten a Shadow Shaman set and a Stealth Assassin set, Riki Maru. Neither of which I was particularly excited about. And then I didn't know that you couldn't trade them until I got the sets. And I was I don't really trade sets, but I like knowing that I could if I wanted to. So are yeah. you angry now because you can't? A little bit. I can one time gift it, but that's not nearly as fun. You can do, you, do you have to wrap it to gift it, or can you just give it away? I have no idea. I haven't tried. I'm not. I don't plan on giving them to anybody, but still, it makes me you better wrap it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> K-pop oh. is giving us some uh, some advice, life, here. life, life advice. lessons, as <laughs> yeah. it were. So, all right, uh, let's talk about Dakota a little bit. I don't know if there's too much to say other than the announcement's been made. We did a fun little YouTube video and talked uh, talked about some of the fun things that Dakota's done. Now, there are some cute little parts in that video as well. Um, but I don't know anything either. The the bosses want to say here about old Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was I was a little disappointed we didn't get to include more of his acting footage because before Dakota yeah. was a caster, he did some work uh, on Broadway and as, mm -hmm. you know did some some commercials here or there. He's a trained actor. He's, he's, a, he's a trained serious. actor. We didn't really get to show it off, but I think we'll we'll have to make up for that in the future with some some fun bits once he gets here. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, rough timeline is he'll be here sometime later this year. Uh, for now, he's working <laughs> remotely. Beyond that. This is rough no as more it gets. Rough no timeline. Sometime this year. I don't know. Maybe next year. We'll I said see rough. How it goes. I said <laughs> rough. That's rough. <laughs> that is rough. Yeah. But wow, that's that's a, a new, that's new like threshold of rough. <laughs> that's like I a, mean, we always we have to go beyond the schedule. So he says sometime this year. What he really means is two to three years. You know? Who knows? We'll figure it out. But no, it's it's a good addition. We've all enjoyed working with Dakota. Our first taste of Dakota was uh, the NA Hub last year for the TI4 qualifiers and. We needed to bring the high ground guys in. I, that was kind of a last-minute decision to have them included. And his first of many one. terrible trips. Dakota yeah. is <laughs> awful at traveling. He always he's just got the worst luck in the world. As yeah. you can see cats running all over the place. The, the Cottle Guy curse, man. Yeah. That was that was the beginning of it. He was stuck. Well, he got stuck overnight in one of his connections, and then he missed the other one because he got delayed. And it was this whole what was supposed to be like a yeah. nine-hour trip turned into I think like a thirty-six-hour trip. Yeah. yeah. And then he showed up, he's like, I want to cast. Like, give me some game. I'm so ready, I'm so ready. And then he was pretty eager. Greg was bed. trying to offer him some caffeine pills. One of Greg's many. Greg was out of control. That was that was next level. He was pounding he, caffeine he, pills. There is a standing ban order. Greg <laughs> is not allowed back in the house. If he has caffeine pills, at least. There, there were a few times where he was bouncing around. I'm like, Greg, your poor heart, please, just... Just take one. You don't need three. Well, he'd like wash the caffeine pills down with energy drinks. Yeah, <laughs> take a caffeine pill with a Red Bull, and then have a monster after that. Like, what <laughs> are you? What are you doing? What What happened to your life that that is what it has devolved into? Jeez, poor Gerg. <laughs> so um, anyway, Dakota's been doing a lot of uh, the remote stuff. He did the <laughs> r remote stream um, for DAC, which I guess is a, a pretty good segue. He had a, a pretty brutal schedule. All the casters had brutal brutal schedules, but. He, uh, being the lead play-by-play -play guy, he he took BTS2, uh, he took the helm, 
So it was it was, not, it, it was definitely a very brutal schedule. It didn't help that there was a little bit of miscommunication with the organizers. Sometimes lobbies would start before casters were ready. Uh, the hours weren't great, though, I mean, to be fair, it's not like the hours were great here either. But The hours uh, are never he, great. He powered through. It's he had five really busy yeah. days, then he's had some time to decompress. Yeah. It's what you sign up for. You do. You set up a studio. You're going to choose some place. It's going to be bad hours either doing for Asia or if we set it up in Asia time zone, it's going to be bad for doing Europe. Yeah. There's always... Somewhere you got to struggle. I mean, there have been times where I, I know, like David and I in the past have had to cast for like what sixteen, eighteen hours straight, maybe of like a two-hour nap in the middle. So yeah, I feel like it's not that it should be a rite of passage. <laughs> I don't think it's really <laughs> it is a, a little bit. It, it kind of is a rite yeah. of passage, whether it should be or not. So yeah. So DAC, you're uh, a man now, Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> you're in. <laughs> He's also the the that was member. that was just part one of the BTS hazing. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Hopefully, we can catch the rest of it on camera. <laughs> um, so, speaking of DAC, maybe that's a good transition. I know you talked about it a lot on uh, GERG, live and uncensored. You guys did the whole DAC breakdown with Charlie and Matt. Yeah, uh, they just they yell a lot. I try to be reasonable. You know, yeah. It kind of works out. Well, that's what happens when you're, when you're live and uncensored with GERG. Uh, something is bound, bound to happen. I don't... Things are happening in our studio as well, and I don't know. <laughs> I, whatever what you're that's... thinking about doing, Brian, that is a bad idea. Do not do that. <laughs> you need to use a lens cloth. Oh. Okay. I don't know. I don't trust Brian. Cleaning the lens with a piece of paper. That's <laughs> the, the opposite yeah, of Yeah, I mean, you move fiber. towards the, the lens. You've got, got the paper <laughs> like... Uh, and he's like swinging uh, it around a little bit. He always yells at us for our head and the camera. I mean, like, he's just testing us to make sure we know what's going on. Like, are they really looking at the lens on this camera right now? This will get them to look in the right <laughs> direction. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Throwing the hair under the bus. It's better than the mustache. That's, that's all yeah. I've got. So anyway, DAC, uh, how was the event here, I guess? I was in China. I can tell you what it was like at the venue, but I miss what it was like here at the house, the behind the scenes of Cinderin, Suns Fan, Winter, the whole crew. How did everybody hold up in the 15-hour days during the main event? I don't know. I, I loved it. I think, <laughs> I think it's, way, it's way more fun than your normal, you know, our, our, you know, the normal routine. When we're casting overnight, yeah. it's like maybe it's two of us at the house. You start it, you know, anywhere between 8 p.m. To, to midnight, and you'll go for, what, 8 eight hours straight maybe, kind of grinding through the games. They're, they're usually group stage matches, online play. Not that you don't bring your A game, but it's a little bit harder to stay enthusiastic and motivated. Whereas like here, yeah. when you weren't casting, you were chilling with the other people that weren't casting. You had someone to hang out with. You know, it just it kept you fresh, kept you exuberant. So yeah. even though we were remote, I felt like the energy levels were a lot better than what they would be for normal online casting. Yeah. You know, it's just too bad we're not at a point where we can have like 15, 20 talent working every event. Yeah, when I was here for the group stage, that's kind of what it was like when you have a game break, but then everyone's watching the game, still talking about it. It's really easy to do the post-game analysis because everybody's constantly talking about the games and theory crafting and talking about interesting stuff. The one thing that was annoying was when we had the two-minute stream delay, and we moved the caster, so they're like, oh. there's, there's, there's like a lounge area where we watch the games when we're not casting. And then right next to that is where the casters were for the main event. And so you could hear what they're saying two minutes before it happened, so... Uh, that kind of that kind of kill, kill I know, the We never orders. quite understood why there was a two-minute delay at, on this at it's, the main because it's a LAN event. It's a LAN event. They should have admins behind them. But. They did too, but I guess yeah. I guess this was their way of dealing with what Charlie was saying. The admins are just falling asleep. So yeah, they did have admins in the booths, okay. but they they did. I will say they did not seem particularly attentive from what I what that I. It sounds get. like Asia, like it's not to be <laughs> to stereotype Asia, but like I've been in Southeast Asian yep. countries as well, where security guards doing night shifts just fall asleep at their posts all the time. It's, but this I've seen a, in Thailand this and was Philippines. A day shift. Like yeah, for a three million dollar event. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so it was overnight for us. It was middle of the day for them. Straight, you know, you wake yeah. up at nine, head over to the venue. Yeah. It was strange seeing security guards asleep at the venue, though. I will say they had a lot of security because of the the problems with New Year's Eve. The uh, there was the, like a stampede, basically. Yeah, the non Chinese New Year's Eve. So like the and from j uh, December to January, and you know, like 180 people got trampled. So oh, they set that curfew to 10 o'clock to try and stop any kind of madness like that from breaking out, and they just had. Cops, security guards everywhere. Just every point of the venue, people sitting on steps. You walk into the venue, and every little access point, there's just a cluster of security guards sitting there. But half of them are hat over the eyes, out in the chair, just like passed out hard or on their phones. Or I didn't really see much actual security needed or just yeah. – uh, they didn't really it's seem it's to like, be on it's duty. It's like day one, they're really <laughs> focused, but by day four or five, they're just like – the only time I saw them move a little bit was when Charlie and I were walking to Starbucks and we were going out the the back door, you know, the back exit for press and players and mm -hmm. the those little boxes that Matt talked about a lot, the the prison cells that they they were calling them where they had no roofs where they're supposed to sit in theory craft, but the teams are right next to each other, so you can <laughs> hear the team in the booth next to you talking. So 
naturally none of the teams wanted to hang in out uh, hang out there to theorycraft. So Vici was in there collecting up all their gear to go to the stage, and Black was in there, and Charlie kind of went up and poked him in the back, and Black was like laughing and said, "Oh, you better run, Americans!" And we kind of ran down the stairs, and security guards they jumped up and they had that look on their face like. It's finally going down. Let's do this. <laughs> and then they saw Black laughing, and we were all laughing. They were like, oh, oh shit. <laughs> all right. Back Immediately back assume, the, assume the position. <laughs> yeah, assume the position. Back to sleep. And then that was it. That was, that was the most active I saw them, but they were ready to come to the Black's okay. defense. I will say okay. they were ready. But was it only because he plays for a Chinese team? That's the question. That is hard to say, and that I cannot answer because we didn't, we didn't test it to the limit. Yeah. After that, I was like, all right, it's, it's serious. I, honestly, it was pretty tame here. You know, Cinderin had too much fast food. Good. There was actually, yeah. there was a night where he had, what was it, a Carl's Jr. half pound burger and yep. then, and the fries, and then he wasn't satisfied. So, <laughs> literally, like, I want to say, like, 20 minutes later, you know, someone else was going to go get food. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'll have another. So, this man had a pound of Carl's Jr. plus two sets of fries <laughs> in the middle he's, of the broadcast. This he's a monster. I I don't is, know how he does it. That is a massive Thank God we food. have mute buttons for the broadcast. That's all I have to say. That is Roland level of, of food devourment. I mean, that is... I think he wanted to match me and Shannon, though, because Shannon is apparently, like, farting constantly when he's casting. And, you know, I was burping up a storm, so it's like, well, I'm going to be surrounded. So we by had these. this dual cast. We had the English cast here, and then back there was the fart cast. Is that kind of how it went down? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> God. Yeah. Oh, it, it was very... I feel like the one kind of, I guess, from my end, I don't know about complaint, but the one thing which I think from the viewer's point of view, and even as it's cast, is it, it was tame. And that's something where, as a big LAN event, as a mini TI, you wanted... We were all hyped. Like the, I think that was the big thing. The game is delivered on such a level that it was like the best Dota anyone's seen since TI, and a lot of people have been saying, I think as far as the current patch in the metagame goes, it was more exciting, more hype, just closer series in general. Um, and that definitely brought the excitement, but then as far as the vibe in between games, it felt a lot more laid back because you don't have the same buzz with the crowd there. You're not really feeling the atmosphere. So that's something which was kind of unavoidable, but yeah. um, which, which you, I mean, you can't, it goes without saying, it was one of the more disappointing things about it. Um, yeah, so. I mean, we were all disappointed that we couldn't be there casting it live. It's, it's also a lot more fun to get to travel to an event like DAC. Yeah. Like. It is. <laughs> that was my favorite thing when people complain like oh BTS aren't going to being lazy I was like you realize this is why I became a caster I want to go to these events like yeah. holy shit I'm more disappointed than you guys like it's it's more fun and it is a lot less for <laughs> yeah exactly they're... if we go to DAC oh, they're doing all our production for us yeah. we don't have to to pay oh, to fly God, anyone yeah. in or, or yeah. take care of them we just have to show up with passports and at the ready and for me and it's go. like I have to do the opposite of getting hyped up at land events I have to tone it down a little bit because you hear the crowd everyone's yelling yeah. everyone's excited like it's yeah. It's a totally different experience for all parties included. Yeah. So I think it's the one thing people have to realize is that we more than anyone get into casting because we want to be at these events. Mm -hmm. So that was that yeah. was unfortunate, but uh, uh, next time, next time for sure. It was it was a fun event to be there on the ground. We had as press managers and just sort of like VIP access. We were on the front stage in front of the guardrail from where the seats were, and then there were just like a row of chairs, kind of out of the camera shot, like the big swooping shot. You're kind of like right in front of the audience. So we had front row seats looking up at the big mammoth. LED screen, which was actually really high quality. A lot of it's made in China, so they had really, really high quality screens. I like got the venue. It okay. Was, it was the viewing experience at the actual venue was actually really good. The audio was great. I mean, you're listening in Chinese, but the audio quality was great. When they're fighting around the Roche pit, there was great surround sound. The acoustics were good. The the screens were huge. If you were up in the higher levels, they had big screens hanging from the the, the rafters and what have you. The setup at the venue was actually pretty impressive, it except looks for the opening legit. ceremony. That was the only thing they really just. Botched. What went so wrong with that? Well, apparently it was supposed to be the teams come in and then they put the spotlight on each. Like they're all supposed to sit in darkness and then the spotlight comes down and they're all supposed to get up and kind of do the slow like prince wave, you know, to the crowd and then they would go one at a time and introduce the teams. And basically, they didn't really time so anything properly and they just turned on all the lights and all the teams just okay. got up and walked off. Kind of what they did for the grand finals with all the teams rather yeah. than just those two teams. W watching so. the opening ceremony, it seemed kind of normal, but they spent like an hour and a half prepping the teams with like the strategy and how when you're going to And then none of it happened. <laughs> just, it was like the, the way the horn yeah. went down where they didn't tell the guys on stage when to blow the little horn so the dust would come out was exactly how the rest of it went. There was no coordination, nobody pulling, like giving the cues properly and then the teams just said... I don't know what's going on. We're just going to stand up and <laughs> just walk off the stage. Dota, Dota definitely needs better opening ceremonies. <laughs> yeah. so like we, we had some cool ideas for the summit, too, which we didn't get to do, but we got to step it up. It was, yeah. it was even uh, TI, TI even was, I didn't, I don't remember it being that special. Like, Gabe say what you waves, will. Gabe just says, welcome to the international. That's yeah, all that, I remember. That's and people it. are happy because he's Gabe and, mm -hmm. you know, he's got a cult following. But yeah. uh, the League of Legends finals in Korea, I don't know if anyone saw it. Like, even if you don't care about the game, you should definitely watch the 
the ceremony just for just to see what can be done. Like yeah. they had they had Imagine Dragons doing an opening show. They had like this entire like I want to say like several hundred person band as well as dancers. All of it's coordinated. It was like a full production just to introduce one match, not even wow. to introduce the whole event. So they went all out with the stadium fireworks going off it was it was incredible now yeah. i think your options may be a little bit more limited if it's an indoor stadium but uh, i know valve gets a lot of flack every year for their closing ceremonies and uh the opening ceremony not to be forgotten either that's where the real hype yeah. comes in because if the finals is crap i mean you can only get yeah. so excited about the closing ceremony i think ti had polish looking at dac though there was a lack of polish as far as just the general like flow of what was going on we're seeing here we're showing the chinese crowd when we can showing the chinese team introductions and it was totally random. Like, two teams would be coming up for a match, and sometimes they'd show the team introductions for the team, sometimes they wouldn't. Sometimes during an ad break, they'd randomly show the team introductions. There and was so no... they were like, oh shit, it's about to start. Oh wait, they're yeah. not starting the match, they're just looping the team intro. At the venue, sometimes yeah. they would play team intros for a team that wasn't playing next. Yes, it felt like they were testing the production live. Yeah. That was the vibe I got as a spectator That's of the what Chinese it felt like They would just play the EG video, and I'm looking at the schedule like, wait, did I mess this yeah. up? Am I confused here? And then... Okay, Secret versus Vici right around the corner. I'm like, well, then what was that? You just wanted to yeah. show off the cool EG video? Okay, I mean, there was, was cool no video, but... Well, part no of it show. was they, they didn't really yeah. have any new content, right? Like, I, in an ideal world, if you have a big enough team, you can have right. new content. Like, after day one, you have a day recap, which you can show at the beginning of day two. Maybe there are some clips of certain teams, like, before their matches. Obviously, resources could be limited, but, mm -hmm. I mean, in your ideal world, you have new video content every day, and it seemed like they had good team intros, and then... Nothing else. I mean, there were some small issues with them. Some of them didn't have subtitles. Some of them did. Uh, volume levels were a bit inconsistent. But uh, overall, like those were still really good pieces of content. It's just yeah. there wasn't much new after day zero, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, I Something did, for them to work on for next time. Yeah, absolutely. I did a whole long hour podcast just talking about my experience in China. I, we're not going to talk about all the details here. The one thing that really stood out to me, though, as a foreigner in China, was the difference in crowd reactions to the players and the picks in particular. Burning, I learned, is far and beyond the most popular player oh, in China. Yeah. Dude, he's got over a half million Weibo followers. I knew he was popular, but I didn't know that he was like, people that don't have never heard of Dota have heard of Burning. They're like, oh yeah, that guy that plays video games, right? Yeah, I've heard of that guy. He, make, he makes a lot of money doing something on the <laughs> computer, right? Like, everybody knows Burning. Whatever, whatever team Burning's on, when the carry gets picked, the crowd goes wild. Medusa! <laughs> Medusa hype! <laughs> <laughs> Just imagine, like, it's incredible. The double stack in the jungle. It's like, oh, Burning's going to farm that later. Suck on that, foreigners. Like, <laughs> the stuff they cheer about is just ridiculous. ROTK, safe lane Tidehunter against Universe's uh, off lane Beastmaster. Universe gets two denies in a row with the whole or the, the boar, rather. People start booing. ROTK gets three last hits in a row. It's like, oh, oh, oh. Like, he, he's literally just farming in lane, guys. Like, let's just. I got to <laughs> say, it would be a lot more fun to cast that way. If you could just be shamelessly yeah. ape shit. Fat crazy in favor of your favorite team. It reminded me of how Roland watches games, except the littlest plays, the littlest yeah. things, that last hit, and they're just, yeah, you know, burning kills a stack in the jungle, and the crowd starts cheering and going wild. Secret gets a team wipe, and there's, like, two people like, ah, yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I say what you will about the commentators, but as far as the crowd, like, I love that. I love yeah. the fact that the crowd is super biased, super homer. That's what happens in real sports, and yeah. it's it's exciting to watch. It just it is, and it, it like some teams some teams feel intimidated. I know Alliance in the past has had yeah. some problems. Like at MLG Columbus, there were some complaints about fans being very rude or nasty to them at times. And I mean, I'm not saying that fans should cross the line there, but a little bit of a you know antagonism I think spices it up, makes it yeah. exciting. And some teams <laughs> rise to the challenge. Like, oh, you think you're better than me? I'm gonna get you. You know, I'm gonna yeah. show you who's boss. So. Players need to get better at dealing with adversity, dealing with criticism from a crowd or whatever it may be dealing with not being like the most loved people playing in a certain match, dealing with criticism from commentators who are going to analyze what's going on in front of them. I think that's one thing where uh, as professionals, they need to kind of grow almost. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. I mean, it sort of comes to the territory. Just having a thick skin, you know that people are going to be ridiculous and inappropriate on the internet. That's the, the nature <laughs> yeah. of the internet, I suppose. The other thing that was interesting to see how EG won over the crowd. Fear is very popular in China. A lot of folks know of him because of free to play and mm -hmm. He's known as the Fossil, is what the casters call him. I, th I just love that. It cool. cracks me up. Such a good name. Fear is like, okay, that's not really an insult, but I don't know if it's a compliment <laughs> either. I'll, I'll take it, I guess. But Sue Mail, oh my gosh, was that guy popular. I mean, they introduced, like, for the finals, they introduced the players one at a time. Next, like, next to the, ch the big Chinese players, Sue Mail was by far the most popular. Charlie was telling me there were fans waiting for hours just to get a picture with him. All these cute little girls trying to come and smooch on him and stuff. It's, it's ridiculous how 
<laughs> like, he's just a superstar already over there. Uh, everyone loves a good child prodigy story. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's, yeah. that's true. Historically, like, it's one thing if you're great at what you do, but if you're great at what you do and you're a kid, yeah. oh, man. It's, it's just a interestingly, freak prodigy. Interestingly, like, doubles human interest for the story. Yeah. And plus his, his competence, if that's, that's what you want to call it. Like, yeah. I, yeah, they try to pitch into softballs, like, how can people be more like you? Well, it's hard to be me. <laughs> So don't try. <laughs> it's basically my paraphrase of Sumail's answer. Yeah. Like, it's hard to be me, which is a true mm -hmm. answer. But they're trying to set him up to be like, you know, you can work hard in life. You know, a little bit of magic, maybe a little bit of luck. The power of friendship trying. will carry you yeah, along. Yeah, you can say something really positive no. and uplifting. He's just like, realistically, you're probably not going to make it, so just quit. He wasn't about any of that, that, that <laughs> yeah, Zephyr bullshit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he was just like, no, you yeah. guys, you guys don't have what it takes. It's very introvert. I, I I met Sumail, but I didn't get to talk to him talk to him too much he didn't he didn't have he didn't seem to have much of an interest in chatting with me so can't blame him gotta he's up, way more gotta, interested. gotta up your chatting game then yeah i know i know hey you don't want to everyone's harassing the guy i feel bad you know everyone comes running yeah up to, we're trying we're waiting to get dinner at a restaurant and people are coming up to him and you know it's nice but at the same time it gets old kind of what's so that you were telling us about is like the especially the chinese press just have no oh. no respect for human privacy secret like, in particular <laughs> i felt so bad for them that when they were knocked down to the lower bracket when the their like undefeated streak ended they, Matt told me they had press like waiting in their little box. They were following them into the bathroom with <laughs> microphones and stuff. Like absolutely no respect for their personal space. They wanted footage of the foreigners crying, and they were going to go anywhere to get it. And that was. I mean, it does happen. Different. It does happen in real sports, right? It happens. Yeah. You know, it happens in you know in general for anyone who's a celebrity or popular in, in music or in media. But it's interesting because we're definitely not there in in yeah. Dota or in most esports. But it seems like in China. Yeah. Maybe in Korea, in some cases, for StarCraft, it's kind of, it's hit that critical mass where now it's different. I liked seeing, like, the little press conferences at the end of big games. That was really cool. It's like, all right, a team wins right away, ferry them down to the press area, line up with cameras and microphones, and press can just take, turn al take turns alternating questions. It struck yeah. me as eerily similar to real life and real sports where they're just passing around microphones and everyone's invited. It, it felt like a real press area. And you go to some events in North America, it's like, here's the press area. We've got one ethernet cable for all of you to share you know it's not really it's a room for press but this was an actual press area where they were constantly bringing in people for interviews and you it know, was a nice experience starletter did that at uh season nine i think it was they had like the press or maybe it was season eight they had press conferences before the matches everyone loved them and then they just never did it again so starletter bring those back press conferences are cool it makes it a lot easier for press too because then you don't have to badger the players for interviews everybody gets a turn and you still get to talk yep. to the players it's it's more efficient for the players as well. They don't have to do one-on-one -on -one interviews. It's, I just think it's good all around. Well, that's not going to stop all your your Gosu gamers and Team Liquid and you know whoever else is sending reporters to these events from trying to get those one-on-one -on -one interviews. Yeah, all those jerks sending all those reporters <laughs> out to those events to get interviews. <laughs> assholes. I don't, I don't know yeah. who reporters would do that. are. Reporters are assholes. Oh my. So, DAC is over. Um, who knows if there will be another one? I guess it, it seemed like a pretty successful event for the most part. I heard that the Chinese viewership was quite good on their platforms, whatever metrics they look for. So by their standards, uh, I hope there's a second one, but time cool. will tell. We'll see. We'll hope. Hopefully the c it will be another DAC. They sounded overall pretty happy. I, I mean, it depends on who you talk to, but that's nobody that's was true. like beside themselves miserable over yes. how the event went. It was not a total disaster, yeah. Yeah. that's for sure. So, all right, pressing forward here. What do we have next on the docket, boys? We need to talk about roster changes. Uh, I like that you put roster changes and stability because they're not really changes anymore <laughs> given the timeline. But um, There's some things there you may not want to quote me on on our doc, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, want, I want you to read it verbatim, Andrew. Let's, let's get David <laughs> on the record here. Okay, oh, so we've got Secret, Cloud9, and EG. Um, <laughs> how oh, they yeah. seem to be post-shuffle. That's actually a good talking point. That one's a little more mild. Maybe we should start there. Um, I think undoubtedly the the top three Western teams right now for sure, outside of China, yep. pretty close to top three world. I don't think you could totally make an argument for that. But <sighs> I mean, t I think technically you have to say yes because DAC is mini TI. But mm -hmm. I don't know. I still I look at I look at Asus Polar Empire Hellraisers. These are teams that you throw them into another tournament with Cloud9, Secret, EG. They may not finish first, but I could easily see those teams making a run, finishing top three. I think top Empire top especially. Yeah. Empire to me is really... Like, to me, I think Empire is on par with Cloud9. Well, I, assuming Navi doesn't poach one of their players, then, yeah. <laughs> then who no. knows, but... Empire to me right now look incredibly good. They look better, much better than Aces, Paul, and Hellraisers even, who are also looking solid. And I think they're, they're one of the teams, if they're at DAC, could have made a, a deep run and maybe gotten top four, top five or something. 
I back. agree. I, I think Empire's been looking consistently solid, which is one of the things I look for. Now, yeah. like an up and coming team that's really going to break through to be like a, a top tier one team. They've been with a pretty consistent roster for a while, and it just seems not very often that I see them throw really hard or play a game where I think, wow, they looked really bad. Right I mean, now. that's that's what's interesting about. The, a tournament like DAC because they didn't do it entirely the Valve way. They had some invites, but they had more qualifiers. And you know, Empire falls short on the qualifiers. If TI adopts a similar format, can you imagine if Empire loses a best of three well, here or there? It doesn't qualify all of a sudden. It was very Asia centric qual. Like they, if they if this was done in Europe, if like, Europe had the same number of slots as Asia did, Empire qualified without right, a doubt. Right, right, absolutely. The... But it's just crazy to think yeah, that a team yeah. as good as Empire. Doesn't make it because of a BO3 here or there. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of crazy right now that the CIS teams are looking more consistent and stable than any other scene right now. Like, for the most part. That is actually crazy. So there's right. Hellraisers, Empire, Asus Polar, PR. Navi v obviously did change VP one player. Classic but is pretty stable. They're Navi. Not yeah, VP's roster is stable. They're very hit or miss. Sometimes Power they can... Rangers, did you say? Yeah. Okay. Power Rangers. And then there's even, you know, teams like My Insanity who can surprise for a game here or there. Mm -hmm. You've got... Yeah. Uh, is Vegas Squadron CIS? They are. I don't think mine Sandy are. They're, I'm they're actually like not sure. mixed Serbian and Croatian. Okay, so they're like but Vegas not Squadron. Quite CIS. Vegas Squadron are yes. They're okay. they're near the the boundary of Western yeah. Europe, they're, I guess. They're in yeah Central they're, Europe. Yeah, they're they're in that side of it. So okay, European Tier Two teams. Let's see here. According to gods, they seem stable-ish. <laughs> this is not my words. <laughs> Navi has changed recently. <laughs> oh, okay. CIS seems stable. Basically, what we just talked about. America, it's a disaster okay. clusterfuck for okay, everyone. Okay, I'm okay with being quite in I'm, I'm okay oh. with that, too. I mean, it actually is a clusterfuck right now of just yeah. teams are changing faster than they had before, which I thought was I mean, Fire had, Fire had a good run. They lasted, what was it, like a week or yeah. something with their new roster. Then they fluff up and leave. It took one loss. They I just want to be, it's not about how long they lasted. It's always about how many losses you last. They, they were and they lasted one loss. One loss. Like, you, your team can be stable for three weeks, but if it's that first loss that you disband on that, to me, is like... I, I mean... I mean, good they disband it, because clearly with that mindset, the team's not going to last, but... It's true. Jesus. I feel like America is just stuck in this rut where there's so many players that have this mindset of, if I just find the perfect mix, we're going to get our break, then we're all going to come together and be really serious, and it's going to work. But when you have everybody sort of thinking that, you have these early losses, and they go, oh, guys, this team's not going to work, and then it just implodes. Yeah. I don't understand them. Like, how, how are they ever going to break through and have core teams? There's a lot of but talent too, so it's like, okay, this team yeah. didn't work. Let's go hop to this other talent and see if this talent worked. Because there's so much talent, I feel like in some at sometimes it works against them. Because it's like, well, let's try the TC Fog team. Like, oh, that didn't work. Let's try yeah. the Demon and Ush team. Let's go try. Let's bring in yeah. a Euro player. Let's see what happens if we bring in fucking Mad. Like, I really don't feel like it's a matter of individual skill. There's no doubt North America has a lot of individually skilled players, but they just can't seem to all be on the same page at the same time. I mean, maybe these teams aren't good enough to beat, like, Vici Gaming or EG or something in a big tournament with their current rosters, but yeah. right now the goal should be qualifying for TI5 and setting up a roster that will last up until then, that can be really competitive. Yeah. It, it's getting out of the wire now. We're almost <laughs> through Febru February. We've got March, April, then invites come out, then in the end of May, TI qualifiers, and then you're either into the event or you're done. And yeah. I got to say, any team being formed now, if they don't start, like, blasting Tier 1 teams off the map, they're not getting invited. So yeah. I think at this point, most of these teams are just looking to set up the best roster they can for TI qualifiers. But, I mean, who knows? If you s if you create a new roster in the middle of April, does Valve even invite that to TI qualifiers? Well, it's, it's like, with, if you have America as a standalone region, who the who the fuck are Valve inviting? I mean, it's, region's just... I will say... It's, region is just in terrible state right now. It is yeah. absolutely miserable to organize a qualifier for America. Yeah. Even, even if you do, like, an open qualifier. Teams may change their roster in the middle of the open qualifier. Yeah. Uh, they, that's one that's team, a problem. One team loses, then suddenly, you know, that team disbands. Two of the players try to go and join another team. We, we had yeah. something similar happen in the Summit 2 during the group stage, mm -hmm. but... It's a real turnoff to, to organizers. Yeah, the problem is it, it gets too incestual where you have to really keep close track of, okay, what is the roster that you signed up with? Usually it's like one change or swap per season is what organizers are willing to stomach. I don't yeah. even want to say aloud because it's like, oh, no, we'd rather you didn't, but if, okay, fine, you get one. And then after that, like, I feel like that happened in the Summit too, where towards the end I'm like, how many teams has Brax played on this tournament? I'm starting <laughs> to feel like... 
I haven't been counting. It wasn't really my job to count, but whose yeah. job was it to count? I think it needs to be somebody's job to count because <laughs> things are getting out of control. I mean, to be fair, it's yeah. not exclusively North American or American players who have this problem. It's just yeah. far more exacerbated in the scene. There are some players like fucking Mad from Europe has played for he. I think there was he played for like three teams in a period of a week. Granted, as a stand-in, but yeah. at some point that gets ridiculous too. But yeah, I, America's I, just the worst in terms of this. It's it's really hard to deal with, yep. and you know you you read some feedback inevitably he'll say we just have to be more strict, say no changes or whatever, I mean, and then it's like, well, then we don't have a qualifier. You don't have a team anymore. You know, and there's you always... Need, you need some baseline yeah. of structure to really enforce the rules strictly on rosters and show, like, how do you punish a team that doesn't exist? <laughs> they just go, well, <laughs> there's no organization attached to this. We're the We Love Ponies team, so take it up with them. We are now officially the Swag Boys. And then with all the name changes, I mean, at that yeah. point, you've got to do a little detective work ha just to make sure that, you know, Hemi it's not the... Club or whatever it was. <laughs> It's, it's just disappointing because the teams that are doing well, like there's always a team who's winning a qualifier. Like we had the Summit 2, it's not today winning. There's a lot of hype around them. Then things went bad and then bang, new roster. Right now, it's eHug. How many roster changes has eHug gone over the last three months? I c I've lost count, but right now there's a lot of hype around eHug. They're doing well. They just won the qualifier for the uh, major All Stars. They're going to be representing America over in Malaysia for $100,000. What is their lineup right now? I know it's Infinity plus a whole bunch. Um, Yawar, Infinity, okay, Trouf, MJW, Trouf, and Ryu. Ryu. Oh, Ryu yeah. Different Ryu. The different Ryu. Not, not Ryu, not Ryu yeah. So it, there's a lot of hype. They're doing really well, but to me, it's just like in my mind, I'm thinking. They let's they, like they're going to go to this tournament. They're going to do however well they do. There's some tough teams going maybe, but after that, two weeks down the road, they start doing poorly. Another two weeks, they start losing more tournaments. Then, looking at history, they're just going to go change their roster again. That's how, how that's how the scene seems to how work. How interesting would it be though to see this team actually stay stable, maybe put up some decent results at at All Stars? Then you've got Sumail and Yawar saving the North American scene with their stability. <laughs> the two North American teams that are going to stick together. I'm just saying it could happen. The players who just moved to America. Yeah. <laughs> Tying America together. It's like the definition of unstable in terms of their <laughs> recent living conditions, and here they are, the, the new the new America. anchors for their, for America. No. I don't know. I, I mean, part of it is it's structural, right? Because most of these teams are not sponsored, even if they're sponsored. Yeah, there's, there's not much money backing them up. They don't normally have contracts that bind them to a team. The state of the American scene is such that you can make a new team, and if you have some decent names, you'll usually at least get a shot in the qualifier. So there aren't a ton of incentives for these teams to stay together, but I mean, I know for us personally, we do prioritize stability. So if you've stuck together, if you're Leviathan versus you know yeah. one of these new like star starter rosters, you're much more likely to get invited further in the qualifier to have a better shot at coming to land. So. Yeah, I think ultimately, 100%. if it's not going to come from teams and sponsors, it has to come from organizers where yeah. they reward stability, not to the exception of everything else. Because you can be stable and be terrible, consistently terrible for a long time. <laughs> but I feel like if yeah. two teams are close, I would, as an organizer, much rather go with the stable team. We had a situation in the Summit 2 last season where we invited Trough and Demons team. I forget who else was on it. They played like three games in the round robin. Then they disband, and we have to replace them midseason. And mm -hmm. there were some other lesser-known teams that had been together longer, which in retrospect... We yeah. probably should have invited them and made Trough and Demons team fight through the qualifier. Yeah, yeah, it's tricky. You never know. Maybe Valve will change something around and give one less slot to North America this go around. And say, you know what? You're all you're all getting punished. You can't figure it out. Well, then combine America and EU or something. Yeah, you know, I mean, like Valve may see that as an opportunity to give America the kick in the ass it needs to get yeah. a little more serious. Oh, and that's that what would be big. <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if Valve. As would much do that. as like we're trashing sure on the stability of these American teams, which is just a, a fact at this point that this scene's in disarray, but. We're in, it's still a case where, like, for the summit, we're going to have these American slots. We're going to make sure that we're still looking to grow the scene and try to introduce that stability. At the same time, it's going to have to come from the teams and the players It comes themselves. from both sides. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's yeah. a two-way street. So, speaking of uh, not knowing what's going on, how about SEA? You just wrote, who knows, sad face. So, if you don't know, I certainly don't know. You are a resident SEA expert, sir. <laughs> I, I mean, I think SEA is in a weaker state than ever before. I mean, on the, on the back of, like, all the betting scandals that happened. Obviously, uh, this is now, like, three or four months ago, but just there's no real stability in the scene. It's the one scene that there doesn't seem to be any prize money in. Um, that's kind of starting to change this year, it feels like. So I we think got major all-stars. That's yeah. Malaysia. Well, yeah, and even then they're, they let Redemption Team... Did they actually qualify Redemption yeah. Team? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they let Redemption Team compete. This is, of course, the, okay. the qu DDZ team. Oh. So, you know, oh. They're not, they wouldn't be allowed to complete in, compete in the Summit, for example. But, yep. yeah. you know, it's... Like, you, having these teams ultimately is going to create question marks every time they play in a tournament. Yeah. At the same time, solo, people are willing to forgive and forget. I personally, if it were up to me, I would not have let them play in the event, but 
I mean, the betting yeah. se- the betting scandals do continue to ha- leave their trail on SEA. That's true. For, for me, with the SEA really scene, it had its it, it like there was a peak for the SEA scene where it was on par with China as far as how strong it was as a scene. Yeah, like you, you had, had Zenith. Orange, um, and then after that, MUFC. it was really good for a while. I mean, That's even even back in like their prime, there was like three or four big name SEA teams that were on par with the best Chinese teams, that were on par with maybe right. the best one or two Western teams. Like there was SEA China, and then after that, there was the West. Nowadays, SEA is much further down the chain. There's yeah. like Europe and China at the top. And then there's SEA in America. I feel like SEA in America on par right now. So is Rave the top team in SEA oh, right and, now? Indisputably. That, yeah. I mean, look at DAC. I mean, exactly. And more, and more, it's just their practice conditions more than anything. Like, yeah. You look at these players, All of them, been, most of them have been playing for a very long time inside of the Philippines or in Southeast Asian teams. None of them really ever achieved anything big. It wasn't yeah. until they moved to Korea, they're living in a team house environment. From what I understand, they really had to like kind of scratch and claw and yeah. you know live on the cheap, you know, eating they're cheap ramen for, as much uh, as possible. Yeah, on their own dime. When I interviewed yeah. Ninja Boogie, I was surprised. I mean, I knew Ray wasn't a big sponsor, like not, uh, you know, a team org, but I thought there was a little more to it than just a, a pretty picture and a logo. Apparently, they are like as grassroots as a grassroots team gets. They just yep. move to Korea by themselves, try to save money. All of their prize money just goes back into the team to try and keep building the house and build their infrastructure. SCA has a lot of like much more difficult to solve problems for me than than what America does. The biggest yeah. ones I think are military service and internet as well as just lack of money in the scene whereas america and visa issues is another one visa issues can be an issue uh, more of a visa issues can be an issue yeah <laughs> they, they can be a bit more of a problem for if they're trying to come to like the big western events mm-hmm. um but i feel like the problems that america has should be more solvable because yeah. to, to your to advertisers on average american viewers are much more valuable mm-hmm. um so there's more incentive to create teams to sponsor right. events in the region you see mlg pouring a lot of money into the american scene mm-hmm. you know our event features american teams esl ran esl new york uh, wouldn't be surprised to see them run another american event in the future uh, and whereas with sea it's like they have a lot of the problems the american region does and then a lot more difficult to resolve structural issues like you can't just yeah. magically give the philippines better internet right. that is a, a big undertaking far beyond just someone who likes esports to go and fix yeah yeah you're exactly right so it, it's a tough region i know the sad times for you gods and all your sca right. friends it happens they'll get through it it's all right that's that shipper attitude no. they need there's like small reasons for hope there's i think major all stars is the big one rave yeah. doing well at dac maybe it this inspires teams to stick together i think that's going to be a good kind of inspiration story for the other sca teams as far as hey you don't have to have a team of all these old veterans you can start trying to bring in some new young talents that's the other thing like even with eg and sumail i feel like that's another inspiration story as far as let's look for some new young talent you had vici gaming already Mm-hmm. talking about how they want to find the next Sumail and try and find like youngsters like that. So this year, there's a lot of more big tournaments for SCA, not just the major all-stars. There's going to be, uh, I think, two GMP GLCs this year, so each one with a $40,000 prize pool. Um, there's rumors of other big events happening in SCA. Are they still doing that funky SCA. format where it's broken into I, tiny little I think baby it's be, regions? I think it's changing a little bit. I, okay, don't, I just don't think Myanmar needs its own region as a yeah. qualifier. I just no, think that's, that's a little too specific. That w- I think that was actually one of the big issues for SCA, is the way yeah. that all these qualifiers were organized was... I think Those somewhat defined things. by the way the like the marketing arms of like a gigabyte wanted to target certain regions, but yeah. it's like imagine if you were to qualify like just for the west coast of the United States, or even more specifically like just a Seattle qualifier or you know yeah. Washington State well, only. Qualifier. I think the better comparison like let's say you like for a Europe tournament you had a qualifier done per country, and then like for the land finals you get the best team from each country. It's like. For one thing, most a lot of these teams. Well, yeah, have you've got like Sweden, who's going to kick ass, obviously. Yeah, and then Germany, you, who will do pretty well. Russia yeah. slash Ukraine, who will do extremely well, and then everyone else. Really that was the model for the the top tier SEA yeah. tournaments. Like that's okay to have on the side as like a country thing, but I guess SEA most yeah. teams are based only in one country. Where Europe's maybe a little different, but it's like well, yeah. your land finals also isn't that good because you have some teams which are just crap, to be honest, or at least compared to the top. Yeah, tier well, one that, I remember when I was casting, there were like four regions, two of them I'd never even heard of. I'm like, where is this place? I had to Google it. I'm like, okay, it's this little area in SEA, and then there was one that was all the rest, which included Singapore, it included a bunch, a couple of other regions. There was one that was super stacked, and all these micro regions that had teams that no one had ever heard of. It was very strange, yeah. very very strange. Didn't well. make for the best competitive tournament for me. Yeah, and then so you're limited fine. to players from just that one area, which yeah, we've seen some of the best teams from SEA have been mixes. Teams that have Singaporean and Malaysian players. Esports in general, it's a global yeah. game. Fucking mad playing on NA. It's yeah, you're yeah. at a disadvantage, but it's yeah. possible. And some teams Ish. trying to stay one country. Alliance, they, or that's the other thing. E, the NIP. EU West teams are currently doing pretty poorly, I feel like. Like Alliance, Tinker, yeah. and NIP is Me- doing well. NIP's doing well. I mean, Ish. they're at, like for a tier two team, I guess. They're not yeah. making breakthroughs. And Meepo and another team is like, these teams are just all... They're doing okay. 
they're still sort of. I don't know. I mean, Tinker. Who knows if what yeah. if they're EU or an NA NIT anymore? NIT's been pretty hit or miss. But today, their their second game, I guess, in that first series today was a bit unfortunate. Jonas yeah. DC'd and was having some sort of connection issues and couldn't get back. So, so they just played four v five. They played four v five. We waited fifteen minutes, had to resume, and so that was a poor way was, for them to. It was looking get like a series down. that we're going to lose anyways. To be fair, I don't think it was like yeah. they were going to win. They're in such a good position, and then this yeah. happened. But it's, yeah, they're still still looking a, a little hit or miss, but. Yeah. Um, so and then China, not too much to say about this scene. Uh, the Chinese New Year has just happened, so I mean, the roster changes will be coming up soon. I think is basically the takeaway. Who knows? I think there will be quite a few Chinese powerhouses when the dust settles. Yeah, the big thing is Big God because they were never really meant to be a real team. They're way basically planning on playing DAC, having some fun, seeing how far they could take it, and then finding real teams after that. This was sort of their vacation tournament, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, that's sort of what, the way I interpret it, at least talking to a few of the people at DAC. It sounds like the only thing that's a hundred percent publicly confirmed right now is that is that uh, Black is out of Vici Gaming. Mm -hmm. That's about it. Beyond that, yeah. Bernie was supposedly said on stream he was joining IG. Then recently on a stream, supposedly he said yeah. he was not joining IG. Obviously, I'm sure a lot of people would love to see Burning joining Vici Gaming, given that they're the most solid Chinese team right now. Yeah, well, but, that would be a powerhouse. I mean, I, 430 and Burning being uh, united together could be amazing as well. Yeah. There's going to be some really fan-favorite teams that come out of the, the Chinese reshuffle. The question is just who's going to end up with whom. Yeah, I'm really curious where Black is going to end up. If he's going to stay in China, if he goes somewhere else. Undoubtedly a very skilled player right now. Yeah. I mean, taking well, he, first he, at the Summit 2, getting second at DAC, he's got a pretty big resume. From talking to uh, with Demon the other night, it sounds like... A, Every Western team out there is like making offers to Black, apart from like your tier one teams, pretend like your right. Cloud9 Secret EG. Everyone else is like, dude, if you can Please. get Black, that is he's, a huge piece He's a hot team. commodity. I mean, yeah. go back to TI4. He plays with CIS. They do terribly, don't end up even qualifying. And then leaving TI4, he, he didn't really have a ton of options. He ends up going to China. He find or uh, staying, going back to China, I should say, finds the opportunity with Vici Gaming. I don't think a lot of people were convinced that it would work long term. Even though he ends up getting booted from that team, his stock has definitely risen a lot. Mm -hmm. the, the, they won a couple of really big events. They won the ESL event. They won the Summit. I think there were one or two Chinese events as well during that stretch. So, sure, maybe he wasn't the best fit for Vici Gaming, or at least that's the call from them. But mm -hmm. overall, that experience does a lot for his opportunities moving towards TI. Yeah, I was surprised to hear that they were removing him. At, like, again, looking at the Summit and DAC, has anyone else looks at those results and goes, okay, you got second in a... TI level tournament and first at the summit, which had some pretty decent competition. You guys are doing pretty well as a team. Maybe Black's not the perfect carry given the communication issues, but um, the way it was described to me is that there's there's some phrase in Chinese. I, I think Winter was talking to you guys about this, where yeah. use your ult on him and attack him sound very similar. And there were a few times, there were definitely a few full mana mana voids that Black threw out. Apparently, that was a result of that miscommunication. Of it's a very subtle sound difference that's hard for foreigners to tell the difference on the fly. So little it, things like that, I think the team really wanted someone they could communicate It's very with. easy to, I think, just say, like, oh, you know, Black, they didn't end up winning DAC. There was a lot of talk about Black being, being kicked. He was the problem with the team. I definitely don't think Black was the only issue with the no. team. And replacing him is not an automatic, this is going to be a better team. But it got to a point where it's it's no secret that they're thinking about Bootium. That No matter how good your, your backbone is, no matter how strong your mm -hmm. mental fortitude is, that's not good for morale. So I feel like once it gets to that point, once it becomes public that they're thinking about kicking you and you're you're dropping a tough game here or there, yeah. it's just you almost have to change. I kind of wish they had won it with him just so it's like, even if they'd gone on to change their roster, which I think still would have happened even if they'd won, even if they'd 3 would EG in the finals, I think they still would be replacing Black right now. Agreed. But it would have just been a nice way to kind of finish things off with Black and also just not leave this kind of just cloud over here it's like, oh, did they lose because of Black? Because then, as soon as he's the one getting kicked, it's like he's the scapegoat. And obviously, that's not what Vici Gaming have in mind. They get along with Black in general. Yeah. Like, there's no animosity there, but it's like, it just would be nice if they could have won that last championship. It reminds me a lot of when um, kind of Secret it, it got rid of Fly, where it's like mm -hmm. the team was doing incredibly well, though probably the best team in their region, maybe you could argue like EG or Cloud9 at the time was on par with Secret when they were playing at the Summit. Uh, and, and did really well. I guess Secret got third place there, uh, beating beating EG in the third place decider. But to these teams, for Secret, for Vici Gaming, even for EG and stuff, it's all about the strive for perfection. It's about getting yeah. first place at TI, nothing else. If there is one small thing you can change to improve your chances, even if your team is good enough to win a summit, to win a DAC, it's if it's an upgrade in their minds and they all agree as a team that's an upgrade, then you, you do it. Even if you win DAC, if you think replacing someone like Black with a Burning, with a Rabbit, with whoever it may be, is going to be an improvement. You, you go out and do it. Yeah. There's a lot of money at TI. <laughs> there is indeed News a lot 11. of money at TI. <laughs> yeah, wow. In case that's you a, didn't hear that's a Mort note. <laughs>
That is a mod note. So, okay, current event schedule. What do we have going on here? What's on our play? What are the events going on right now? Fallout or the, the major All-Stars tournament. It goes by a couple different names. Dota Pit's been going on. MLG is getting started, but I feel like it's just kind of heating up a little bit. We haven't really seen too much out of MLG, at least. I haven't seen too many, too many airwaves uh, being made on that front. It seems like this first season, a little bit lackluster. The Chinese division in particular has... No Chinese teams. Was there? I oh, guess it's the, the Asian division, division. The Asian yeah, yeah. division. That's what they called it. Has no Chinese teams. So it's just a, you can't really run a Chinese tournament right now. Yeah, it's, I mean, oh, you it's can't. Not their fault, but it, they're on break. Yeah, it, it's it's tough. So um, I guess that is that pretty much the big three. I guess ES Portal is also going on right now, but it's intermittently. Yeah. We have the qualifiers and the little breaks. ESL will probably be starting pretty soon. They announced mm -hmm. their open qualifiers. I think. We still haven't heard anything about Dream League yet. They've been completely silent. Yeah. Um, we're, we're getting ready to announce Summit 3 information. Mm -hmm. Star Ladder, Very soon. supposedly Season 12 coming soon. We're so kind of all waiting details. for the, the official word there. I did see the other day that D2CL is now doing a new uh, season, yeah. and that's going to be on Twitch, which is a big change. They were Daily Motion before, and they finally decided, if we want this tournament to be serious and we want <laughs> people to watch it, Doing it on Telemotion probably isn't the right avenue unless they're paying us so much money that fuck all, we don't care about <laughs> anything else. Because it's, yeah. it's unwatchable for half the world, and it's also yeah. just, dare I say, a rough platform. Uh, Seeing porn pop up next to my was Dota is not quite what I'm, what I'm interested <laughs> that, in. That in particular is <laughs> not good. I think, they may, I think they may have fixed that since then. Good. good. I don't know. <laughs> I will say the first season of, of uh, D2CL was extremely rough. I'm going to be honest. I saw that, and I never went back. That was my first time. Like, I don't... The few times I, I I'm not in incognito, guys. Please. The few times I tuned in since then, it, I, I would I think it was pretty watchable. Like, was it? Uh, the main thing you miss out on is the Twitch chat experience. Oh uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Apparently they have a gaming portal now. I don't know what that means. I guess you're yeah. isolated from the porn. They have that porn bubble for gamers. It's weird because that's, that's like a that's a great way to like keep cook, to like you hook your gamers <laughs> with the gaming content, then you keep them there with the porn. I feel like this yeah, is a big mistake for for daily yep. motion. Daily motion. Please. This was what made you unique. Come on. But uh, yeah. I'll say the same for the MLG platform. Like the the video playback, at least for for me, has been great. See, I've had very good personal experience with the MLG video playback. To be fair, I haven't tried Daily Motion in probably a year, but I tried multiple times when I was in Jersey, and it it never worked great above like 360p. The, so I just gave up. The right problem now. for all these platforms is just people just people turn on Twitch like they turn on TV. Mm -hmm. You know, in a lot of cases where you just turn it on and then you see what's on. And then you might even flip around from channel to channel. It's but your yeah. TV guide, basically. Yeah, it feels like it's with MLG and Daily Motion, like you only turn them on if there's something in particular that you want to watch yeah, that yeah. you know is on the platform, and it's just hard to build up your your standard these, viewer. These base platforms that way. work for the premier content, which is going to get viewers for what it is. It doesn't work as like a, just a TV network, which is where, like you said, people are going to turn on Twitch yeah. like they turn on their TV. If they want to watch gaming content, they turn on Twitch. If they want to watch shows nowadays, you go on Netflix. At no point are people thinking, hmm, I'm just going to go over to Hitbox or MLG platform and see what's on. Unless yeah. maybe, that, with some exceptions, like the Call of Duty America scene is huge on MLG, so I guess yeah. those people just rock up on yeah. the MLG it, this platform. This is the context of Dota. Yeah. So every and even just, platform I think has its own esports in general, but there's like a few small exceptions. Yeah, like Hitbox I know has some CSGO on, like that's, they have at least a portion of CSGO streamers on their platform. Okay. So it's a little different for the scenes, but in general, Twitch is that go-to hub. Um, so... Where were we? We got derailed talking about tournaments porn on Daily Motion. On, you know? Oh, yeah, tournaments. Oh, I want to talk about this Twitch crowdfunding for Dota Pit. That, talk about interesting. So I guess apparently now when you sub to Dota Pit, part of that money goes towards the prize pool. I know what you're checking, LD, and ha the answer is $47.50. It has not seemed to be a big hit so <laughs> I was far. Gonna, I wanted to bring up the exact <laughs> number. It, I think it was $47.50 Now, as of I this mean, morning. maybe that's not 100% up to date, but in general, it seems like it is updating. Team Secret getting rich. <laughs> yeah, um, I, there just doesn't seem to be that much value in the ticket compared to like like people who s do that. I think they do it purely because they want to support high ground Dota Pit and the teams. Th I don't feel like what they're getting is that valuable. Like uh, emoticons yeah. are okay, but emoticons are not generally why people subscribe to channels. And I think the same remains true with Dota Pit. I think two issues are one: the Dota Pit doesn't have a huge brand yet. Something like Starlight. Well, Starlight is a bad case because they're CIS based. But something that has the the reputation of Starlight, I feel like that could be more useful if they're driving subs. Well, might, maybe more like six, seven months ago. I'm yeah. not sure how great. Well, that's, that's. I think the reputation is kind ago. of mediocre right now. But yeah, but if you go still, back to like Starlight or Season Nine. Yeah. Maybe their brand can help drive a couple extra subscribers. Yeah. Or if you have like a sort of a subscriber base, you already have a lot of... Like, I feel like there's a lot of momentum just in subscriber-based things in general as you unlock more emoticons, it becomes more interactive, all that kind of stuff. And the second is, this is just more evidence to me that hats are... Hats are controlling the scene right Someone now. Someone has to dislodge the hats. They're like yeah. the final boss of Dota. 
They're keeping us down. They're preventing us from elevating our game to the next level. How do level. you counter hats? Tell, please tell me. What is the counter pick? Because you can't yeah. ban them. You can't ban out hats. In the Some tournaments have tried banning hats. <laughs> it hasn't gone well for them. For them, <laughs> It doesn't work. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's no secret that a lot of people buy tickets, compendiums, what have you, for the hats, the cosmetics. There's a whole pool of people that don't give a shit about the ticket and just want the item so they can resell it, trade it, whatever it is. That's a little more difficult now. But, it's, um, yeah. you know, it's weird because, I mean, what do you do? What, what, what value can Twitch add that that they yeah. don't already try to like the, the big thing that gsl has done in the past is they paywall video quality mm -hmm. um they have the subscriber only vods yeah both of those are a great way to get a, a nice negative PR Star thread. starcraft <laughs> was okay with it because it happened very early in the starcraft life yeah. cycle it was, it was considered first experimental the first like t post twitch era esport i guess you would say once twitch really took off yeah you can't you can't do that when a game's four years old uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even even the thought of turning on subscribers only chat is enough to make people want to burn yeah. everyone at the stake. And even back then, I don't think it was particularly successful. I think you can make a strong argument that that kind of paywalling really harbored the growth of StarCraft in some ways. Yeah, it's not all. It's not, not all, all that, but yeah. I think that that was a contributing factor at least. It was a worthy experiment, but now people look at that and will point to that as. I mean, don't do it. You know, you look at what the CS:GO streams do. They they do a lot of them do the super hardcore sellout mode where they'll like constantly. You know, they'll constantly be doing giveaways. They'll advertise the giveaways in the middle of the broadcast. They'll hand out hats so people subscribe, you know, partially to support the studio and the content, but mm -hmm. a lot of cases to win their free hats. I, I want to so see an LD sellout stream. <laughs> I want to see a, a pop-up, a, a personalized thank you for every follow, a personalized dan dance hat tipping to every sub. I, I want to see every the time full someone sellout. subs. Wow! Yeah, <laughs> wow. And then it actually worked really well in after hours. So it did. Yeah. <laughs> that 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 was um, good. That had it's good. Can, with can you imagine if we turn our tournament broadcast into like your standard subscriber stream? You know, like Waga stream every like he plays yeah. the TA sound every time someone subscribes. You hear the sound. You get the little icon that pops. We're up just in the middle casting. Of the stream. It's like wow, <laughs> wow. <laughs> that would actually be kind of funny. That might garner uh, some subs because they can interrupt the cast with wows. <laughs> or like middle of a big team fight. It's like the play version two, and then That's suddenly it's like X has donated, and it's like yeah. reading the donation. And it's like covering half the w w w w w w w w w w w w during the middle of a fucking massive team fight. You know what? That's the future. It's Twitch casts a Dota two game. That's what it is. Oh, you can this pay is... to cast the game. Uh, we don't even have to cast. We don't even have to cast anymore. That's going the next level. I mean, we at the summit we get the players to do it, so we can sit back, drink our martinis, like. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's what we're gonna do for our online content. Just hey, I Twitch like chat up to a text to voice thing, and then we don't even have to cast. They can like pay that. for the privilege of doing our work oh. for us. How Hopefully, our sound? producer is writing this down because I think yep. these take are some, some golden take ticket some notes, ideas right here. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, we're getting towards the tail end here, guys. Uh, I want to talk 6.83 at least a little bit before we wrap the show. Phantom Lancer. He's the talk of the town. There's a lot of other things that happen in that patch, but PL. He's in captain's mode. We haven't seen him too much. I guess he was picked up the other day. We were talking about it this morning. Secrets played him once. How did, how did uh, it go? E no, EG and Hellraiser. It was EG yeah. and Hellraiser. That yeah. was it. So EG dominated with him. Hellraisers got dominated with him. Um, By secret. Both games were like yeah. one-sided games based on the teams that were playing was kind of the issue. So it was hard to see the hero and what it was yeah. going to do. But I like what you were saying about PL in the offlane. We haven't seen yep. that yet. We've seen him in the, the tried and true one position, but... I think, think I feel like his skill rework was set for the offlane. Um, he's got a his doppelganger, whatever it's called, which is like a blink where you have illusions, is like the escape spell, which your offlane is neat. Uh, his his little rush skill, spirit rush. I don't, yeah, I don't sure. fucking know. I what think those are the called. names actually. Doppelganger, spirit, and rush. spirit rush. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I think that, you have it. That to me is like your gap. Like if if you're getting zoned out by a range support while the carry is off, just controlling the creepy loom, it helps you break mm -hmm. the gap between a range support and you as a melee hero. So to me, everything about the way his skill set was reworked was like Ice Frog or whoever came up with the concept, like, let's turn this hero into a completely different hero. Like let's a fighting hero, a ganking yeah, hero. An annoying, like, man fighting, offlining hero. The Spirit Lance is like your ganking DPS tool. To me, it's like a. His skill set is designed to the offlane. Whether or not his stats and stuff are good enough or his spells do enough for the offlane, it's hard to say. But I also feel like he's just an naturally fairly tanky with his stats and base armor, so. He is. Yeah. I think his ult still gives him some magic resistance as well. I think that got taken out. Oh, no, that no, got no, taken out. That got out. taken out for I something I got taken else. out. Okay. Yeah. I mean, so uh, you have to look like look at some of the more recent patches. Illusion damage got heavily nerfed on towers and, mm -hmm. and buildings. So not as good. In general, illusion heroes are worse at split pushing. He has trouble like sustaining that really big army without leaving the main hero there, which puts him in harm's way in a lot of cases. Yeah. So he's not a, a nearly as good of a split pusher as he used to be. But mm -hmm. I, I think, like David said, excellent fighting carry. Ex maybe a semi-carry in the offlane. But yeah. 
okay. kind of like I mean maybe kind of like your Night Stalker off lanes that we've seen from a lot of the CIS teams. I can see teams. that. that he's, could be he's just not a split pusher. He doesn't. It's the illusions are for you, like in the middle of a fight, creating confusion and doing damage to heroes. I guess. Yeah. Now. He is really fun though. He's got like that Zel. Yeah, you know, like the charge lots in StarCraft too. I remember when those were first came out. I was like, this is one of the most badass things I've ever seen in a video game. And yeah, he has that like just bull rush effect. <laughs> It's yeah. really it's really irritating to play against PL. He does really have the chaos factor now. As before, you know, he would split push. You know, there's a lot of PLs there, and you, it was kind of hard to tell which one it was. But once you identified him, and he's running away, if you have dust or some way to reveal him, you can isolate him. Now, every time he uses the doppelganger, you don't know which one of the illusions is getting. It's like a reshuffle. Yeah. yeah. So he's just a lot more elusive in general, and it's it's harder to identify who the true you can phantom go, like, is. Up and down cliffs and stuff, too, of course, like, like yeah. you can with a normal blink. So. I mean, I definitely want to see more of the hero. I'm not sure how strong he is, but... You got to put him in captain's mode to find what out. What about like a greedy four position PL? Do you think that could happen? Like the mm. like some sort of uh, I don't know. I don't know why you would do I it. But I'm not sure what he would do as a support. He's quite level dependent, I would say as well. Yeah, I guess that's true. I, I feel like he just has some. Early it reminds me a bit of like a spirit so breaker, like in some ways. Okay. Yeah. And that's where it's like spirit breaker. You can kind of run, uh, run him as a four, but it's like if it doesn't do anything, he becomes completely useless. Yeah, he's not really gonna yeah, de-push right. that effectively if he doesn't have. I don't know why in my head I feel like PL coming from behind the trees and trying to gank me is scary, but I think mm -hmm. in practice it's really not quite as scary yeah. as I'm. I've, I'm still having nightmares okay. like about the old Phantom Lance. It might be in the first yet. five minutes, but imagine you're like yeah. 20 minutes right, in sure and he's level yep. six. All right, my, eh. my inner Suns fan is coming out. I'm taking the theory okay. crafting too far here. What it's about fun. a five Phantom Lancer? Wouldn't that be crazy? This is really wild. Bra! Let Come me on, tell you. All right, I'll be right back. I got to poop. I'll see you later. <laughs> There's a surprising amount of heroes which are ran mostly as carries or cores that can do quite well as support. Like, less so in maybe competitive. <laughs> Brian loves his dragon. This guy. But I think, like, we saw the Queen of Pain by Tong Fu during DAC as a support. I think that's a hero which can be a legit four position ganking mm. support. One good game. Two good games. They had at least two where they won with it. They lost quite a few with that as well. Did they? they yeah, I, they I did. Was, that hero definitely lost on support. Two and zero. I, I cast say. that oh. shit. Okay, Our two and one. Man is doing some research here. Tong Fu did. It's yeah. I it's guess I'd very have a four good. Tusk. I feel Tusk is, Tusk is much better in that. As the defensive option. Yeah, so I, yeah. I was talking about Phantom Lancer. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Like just comparing. Them. I'm still talking about. Yeah, my own Tusk, Tusk brings <laughs> a lot more to like your team fight with the the snowball. It can be used defensively. You've got yeah, the sigil, the shards, which is great as well. Everything. Yeah, it's a lot more control. Jug support. How about that? Jug support. Yeah, jug support's definitely legit. That was the old school DK strat. A little bit, but I mean, we saw a jug totally. Actually, I think jug support now would kind of suck with the nurse because his mana costs are way too high at level one for all his spells. Yeah. Yeah. Not he, as a it, five. It Maybe as a four. You yeah. He needs those early stats. He yeah. really does. So, and I guess we should make mention of Winter Wyvern. Is it is that the proper pronoun? I always said Wyvern growing up when I was like playing Warcraft Three. Is it Wyvern or is it Wyvern? Is there a proper? I said Wyvern. But Wy I don't Wyvern. Know. Wyvern. <laughs> Wyvern. Urn. Wyvern. 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 Why? Why? Wyvern. That's. I'm why, just going to avoid whoa, saying whoa. this word, I think. Why are we going to the guy from Alabama for pronunciation? Like, pronunciation? Just, what a slam. Pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> why are we going to the slam. Alabama or the Aussie? Well, like, yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, not to East, East Coast, Coast. Yeah. I'm, I'm not saying we should go to the Aussie here, because I'm definitely... Well, I, I just don't know. Squirmish. Squirmish. I'm for the fact I can't pronounce shit <laughs> yeah. to w save my w life. Well, you, you can worse. pronounce shit. You did a really good job with the word shit just there. Okay. So don't don't, be, you, well don't done. be too hard on yourself. Well done. I'm glad I've got your I Ivy League education earlier. to <laughs> congratulate me. I, I, have a, I have a degree in pronouncing <laughs> shit. Good, good. So <laughs> they don't issue them anymore. <laughs> so Winter Wyvern, how, how, is, how is she? He is. I think it's a she. She's a pretty she. frost drake. Yeah. Yep. What, what's her deal? How, how competitive is she? How broken is she? Is she I on Oracle level support? Solid, solid support. Solid. I think. I don't know. I, okay. uh, it's, it's like a defensive support. Like the heal thing is kind of reminiscent of like your Abaddon. Um, the heal thing. <laughs> I don't know what the ice block thing. What's the... it called? I, I don't know I, the name of spells. I'm a Dota caster. Like I don't know names. <laughs> um, cold embrace. Cold embrace. Frost embrace. Frost embrace. Like yeah. Um, it's like reminiscent of the Abaddon Aphotic Shield, or like it's it's just like a nice little defensive thing. Except it scales really well to the late game because it's percent based heal healing. Cold, Cold embrace. embrace. There you go. Close. Mm -hmm. um, and then a lot of her skill uh, as a support, she scales really well to late game. Like her uh, first skill, which is the flying skill. <laughs> um, can we can we get like new, new hero guides with gods? Sorry, I'm mean, gonna you get on the bird here. She's gonna use the wing spell. You could just be bringing it up. <laughs> on the screen, you know? I mean, we have the power. <laughs> 
I, I could describe you exactly. It's, it does, I think, 6% of your current HP per second in damage. He can't even find that the hero. About, that sounds about right. He, he Dota2.com, let's... <laughs> he's, he's having trouble going to Dota2.com, gentlemen. What are you talking about? I'm on the Winter Wyvern wiki page. All right, here we go. So you got your Arctic Burn, 6% slow, and it gives you the flying as well, so it's, it's a pretty good spell. Um, Splinter Blast is like your good nuke, which to me is one of those spells where it's like you either max it out or it's you get that one value point for the 25% slow. Try not right. to show your Skype here, David. Gotcha. Yeah. This is one of those spells where it's it's value as like a single point to get for the slow, or you can max it as your first skill, and then it's like a really high damage nuke on a short ass cooldown, four second cooldown for a, a 340 damage nuke. Except it's it doesn't nuke the target. You you have to ha like target it near something. So I, I see this okay. hero being very viable as a support. I think either I mean it scales well, it just it zones well, and the, the ultimate is great anti carry oh, yeah. towards the late game. You freeze one, and then all your friends start attacking the ice cube. You you isolate like somebody, uh, like one of the supports, one of the key initiators, and then all of a sudden that six slotted anti mage is killing his friend. Yeah, a pseudo black good. hole. Some people say, but I even just can you can use it just as like a general roar initiation. Like you, it's got a good cast range. So if you're trying to gank a storm or something, you just lead off with this. It doesn't matter if there's no one around to attack the target. It's just a long. Duration disable, yeah. so you can change because it's an instant disable. That's a big thing here. So many of stuns on like your vent stun or whatever. You're trying to gank a storm spirit, which is such a trendy here right now. You just ball lightning dodge everything. So that's where a spell like Winter's Curse is really good. So, mm. so Winter Wyvern, good here. Predictions: Who's going to be in the game first, or the captain's mode first? Oracle or Winter Wyvern? Um, Probably Oracle. I think Winter Wyvern, but oh, we got some. I think I, Winter I, Wyvern's just a lot more like it's a lot easier to say. Oh, this hero is fine and balanced. With Oracle, it's like I actually I don't know. I feel same. Oracle's just Funky and like what he? I don't know. Oracle is mean, very funky. That's a good word for yeah, it. Yeah, uh, Oracle's been sure. in the game longer. The other, th it's not yeah, just yeah. about balance though. Valve is looking at bug fix. It's like all Earth's, these new well, heroes. Earth have Spirit's huge been bugs. in the pool longer than both of them. But is Earth Spirit coming anytime soon? No, but that hero <laughs> had to get like completely reworked. Also, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. was it a sixty-five percent win rate in pubs? So <laughs> no, I think he's super bad. Well, no, no, had no, had, had then he got reworked when he was first put out. When he yeah. first came out, he had a ridiculous win rate. At yeah. very no, but it, like his overall win rate, I think was sub fifty percent. Well, because, you know, who how cares about the win rate of a hero? Yeah, yeah, yeah but I'm, I'm just saying your stats yeah. are wrong. <laughs> no, my stats are right for very high, which okay. is what matters when well, you're you talking should, about balance. You clarify. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You, come, you, you, you come clarified. You come out and say the hero had a sixty-five percent win rate, which was okay. I'm, I'm, just, I'm not trying to be adversarial here. I'm uh huh. Just, I'm not trying to be overall, a contrarian, but you're so overall. wrong, LD. Let me tell you about why you're wrong. <laughs> You I don't it, mean to tell you, he's but so, made it he's sound so like aggressive. You made it sound like the hero was imbalanced because he had this ridiculous win rate when his pub win rate was like 40-something percent. It was like even below Yeah, that of course, yeah. but there's he's a lot of heroes that syndrome. are... Yeah. Oh, yeah. no, I, I, I totally agree he was imbalanced. I'm not disagreeing there. Okay, just are you, we're splitting Harry's over the pub statistics. All right. Well, now that we've got that settled... <laughs> uh, okay. So, coming towards the wrap here, gang, anything we want to say about the Summit 3, we've got uh, the official announcement right around the corner. Any spoilers? Any little anything you want to get your feelers out there with LD? Do we have any? I it's on the so. it's on the mm. list, so I wasn't sure. Well, I'll we'll have a really big announcement. I think you'll all be pretty happy. Until then, okay. you're just gonna have to wait. I don't know. Do we want to be spoiling stuff now? I, I'm just following the the lead of of one David Parker. I here. just checked something on that. I don't know. All right. So I was Summit Three announcement of announcement. It's around the corner. So buckle your seatbelts and sit tight. Plug into the social media. It's coming. Is that all? Is that where, is that where we want to <laughs> leave it? Just tease them. Okay. You'll, you'll hear about it when you hear about it. It'll be good. Yeah. Patience. Okay. <laughs> well, that yeah. yeah. That wraps it up, guys. Make sure you follow at 100TB on Twitter. They make this show possible, and you can find out anything you need to know at 100TB.com. They do servers, infrastructure, all that kind of stuff for industrial-grade businesses. Enterprise is the word, not industrial. Jesus Christ. But that's <laughs> it for today. We'll be back next week in the studio. We'll be back. One last thing. Oh, you got something. Yeah. What you is didn't it? read the last bullet point. Well, I, I, mean, I can bring this up. So in the studio. Oh, yeah. I forgot about this. Okay, go ahead. We're looking to rebrand. We're looking to redo things, freshen things up. 2015 is a new year, and we want a new show name. So we're going to change things yeah, up here. You, we want <laughs> your guys' you under the bus right Yeah, so you know why I didn't bring that up? Uh, because I was the one that came up within the studio. So well, I'm, I, I, I'm like, I, I supported oh. it. Great. Oh, okay. I, I, I supported I it, and now I'm changing my support to whatever Twitch chat comes up with. Good try, you know, Zayori, but we're relegating it to Twitch, Twitch chat. Twitch chat and not only casting Dota, they're going to come up with all our ideas. So we want to basically, yeah, we're going to be looking to redo things here in 2015. We want to do something, something more Dota-specific, because In yes. the Studio was very general, very bland. It was like, if you go on YouTube and search for In the Studio, 
Yeah. Guess what? In the studio, it doesn't show up. And we also ran... Yeah, that's true. It's bad for uh, SEO, but we also got into that conundrum of we did everything else, and we were like, all right, the studio, everything else, so now what do we need to get the show? Well, before we can make any of the assets, we kind of need a name. How are we going to brand this? Shit, we need a name. Yes. We need a name in 24 hours. Everybody, quickly. Okay, this is what we're going Well, with. we've got the three retards. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good start. That's great. We've got some good brainstorm here. That's good. Thank you, Brian. Um, Brian, your names suck. Beyonder the schedule. Beyond the schedule. The ones that you're choosing to share with us suck. <laughs> Beyonder the schedule. <laughs> <laughs> so, so tweet them, um, email tweet us. Is there an official place? Uh, tweet us, email. Subreddit's probably the easiest place to keep oh, track yeah. of it. Um, our subreddit is Just beyond, the summit, beyond the Summit, I think. Yeah. Slash R beyond okay. the summit. So the subreddit's special. the best place. But if you tweet at us, we'll re we read our tweets. And if it's a good one, we'll write it down. If you just Google BTS Reddit, it'll be yeah. the first hit. That's our that's our promise to you. We, want we read all, our tweets. We want all the good, the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> the as far BTS as guarantee. <laughs> we read tweets. Here at okay. BTS, we are Oof. big believers in uh, reading our tweets. Yes, yes, we are. So, all right, that wraps up this episode of In the Studio. Back, yeah, we'll be back next Sunday. BTS After Hours also going to get kicked up again here as we get well into 2015. So you can look forward to that. And we may be looking for requests for fun games, fun things we can do to fill the After Hours time slot. But until then, this is LD Gods and Zyori in no particular order signing off for today. We'll see you later.